Hi, my name is Patrick Hudson. I'm the CEO of Robot Entertainment. We're the makers of the Orcs Must Die franchise, and we're here at Gamescom showing off Orcs Must Die Unchained. So Orcs Must Die Unchained is the third iteration in the franchise. The first game was a single player game, second game was co-op, and now we've made it into a much bigger game. Um, it's a, we have two different modes now. It's uh, started out Orcs Must Die Unchained as a PvP game, five players versus five. Almost kind of like if you've ever played the original Orcs Must Die games, pitting two games of Orcs Must Die against one another. Five heroes on one side against five heroes each trying to defend uh, waves of minions coming at them. Here at Gamescom, for the first time, we are introducing our new PvE mode, uh, which is a little more akin to the traditional Orcs Must Die experience. You and four friends are trying to hold off waves of minions coming at you and prevent them from getting into your rift. Uh, the other big change in the franchise now is it's gone to a free-to-play uh, model. Uh, before it was a paid download on Steam. Um, so far we think that's going to work out quite well. Uh, hope to be quite generous with our fans, give them a ton of content up front, and hopefully become a hobby over time and uh, find some other compelling things and content that's interesting to them. A couple of reasons. One is, you know, our Orcs Must Die 1 and 2 were quite successful in the West, um, but we never sold any copies overseas, in, in Asia especially. Uh, Asia and Russia were markets that we had trouble taking the game to. They'd be pirated, of course, but you couldn't sell anything there. So we wanted to, to go with a model that would be global in its appeal. Um, is one thing. Two, we've seen it done well in other games, games that we respect that have had free-to-play models that have worked quite well for these styles of game. You can think of a League of Legends, you can think of a World of Tanks, games that we like and play a lot of back at the studio and uh, so we find that mapped pretty well to the type of game we wanted to build. Yeah, it's, uh, we introduce new heroes. The game is very hero based. Um, we start you out with a set of five free ones and we'll introduce more heroes over time. And uh, you can buy those. Everything in the game except for vanity items will be earnable. Um, so if you want to spend time and, and invest and earn those that way, that's great. If you, wanna, if you wanna get those things sooner through purchase, then we'll introduce heroes. Yeah, PvP is still uh, one core mode, um, any combination of players, but primarily a 5v5 setup. Uh, we currently have three maps in the game available. They're rotating now through the beta. Um, there'll be a random rotation. Uh, PvP will continue to grow. We're, we're adding new features all the time and adding new heroes to that. Um, yeah, so that's where PvP stands today. We'll probably be more conservative with the maps. Um, we want to have a handful of maps that people get a chance to, to learn well. The environment plays a lot into how you experience and enjoy Orcs Must Die. Physics traps that come into the ga game, um, environmental traps, so it's a different game uh, every time. Um, there's different types of objectives on each map that take a while to learn. So. So we'll start with three, maybe we'll grow to five or six over the next six months after we release the game, but it won't be a new map every, every month or anything. Some are shared, but there's also separate maps for PvE. I mean, some, some are the same. Um, you know, the heroes that you use, the traps that you use in PvP, you can use back in PvE. Um, but other than that, it's just it takes away a little bit of the intensity and the pressure of having other sets of humans fight against you, right? If you, we've certainly seen in our own beta that people have come uh, that have played Orcs Must Die before, and they say, you know what, this isn't really for me. I don't want this PvP experience. This is, I'm not a competitive player like this. So we want this PvE experience to be there for them, that they can kind of enjoy it, uh, maybe at a more casual pace. But the maps will be different. We'll probably release maps more frequently in PvE than we might say in PvP. Um, and there'll be other kind of nuances about PV that are specific and content delivered just for PVE. We're really excited about this concept we've been working on for a few months. Um, uh, a, a large castle map that really unfolds over time. Um, if you think of how a, maybe a castle starts over time, uh, uh, we want to expose a little bit to you so you can kind of get your arms around the map. 
but as you get farther and farther into it and progress deeper levels, unlock more and more of that castle. So you can imagine a late stage that might have three massive levels across a very broad base and minions are coming at you at random at random points that you don't expect. Maybe a ship sails up to the side, docks, drops off a bunch of orcs, and you don't see that coming. You know, maybe that's a new experience that didn't happen the last time you played. And maybe this time it's a totally different order. A lot of destructible elements inside this environment that we haven't really had before in Orcs Must Die. So pretty ambitious um, that we've wanted to do for a long time in PvE uh, in Orcs Must Die. And now we're finally getting a chance to deliver that later this year. We want, the, we want a lot of randomness in there and what order they come in, maybe the bosses are delivered to you in a different way, maybe this time the ship sails in and it didn't ship and it didn't sail in before. Um, you know, the types of traps you place down to counteract what's coming at you. So we don't want the same experience every time. Yeah, there are some ideas for customizable guardians. You saw, I think, even in the trailer video there, um, um, Temper is a stand-in guardian. So, yeah, we will see some more interesting things with guardians. Their core abilities are still the same. You know, we our initial thinking was the more defensive-oriented characters would be... Uh, the heroes that were chosen and played the most in PvE. We saw when we released this, the first patch with the PvE mode out to our beta community, they were bringing offensive heroes in and using strategies that we hadn't really considered. So it made us kind of rethink how we're approaching heroes and being used in PvE. So heroes can be used, both offensive and defensive heroes can be used in PvE and be used in different ways. Um, there will be some strengths of each hero that are better utilized maybe in PvE or utilized differently per se in PvE than they would be in PvP, but they go, they go back and forth. It's still in closed beta right now in North American Europe, only in North American Europe, where the, you could access from anywhere, but the servers are in North American Europe. Been in closed beta for a while now. We're reaching the final stretches of our closed beta schedule now, and we'll be releasing the game um, in, in early 2016. We, we will plan to hopefully go from an open beta to release in pretty short order. Yeah. I don't think so. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Yeah, absolutely. Bye.